Christmas from Poland and welcome to Poznan, the fifth largest city in the country and a place very, very famous for its incredible Christmas markets. I'm currently at one at the moment, but unfortunately it doesn't open until a little bit later on today, so we will definitely be back. In the meantime though, I am going to take a walk around the city, learn a little bit about the history and the traditions. First stop I think is going to be a couple of minutes walk from here, and that is the Old Market Square. arrived in the market square it's a little bit rainy this morning it's cold it's dull and it's damp but hopefully it will brighten up a little bit later um, the good news is I've arrived in time for the billy goat show and I'll tell you more about that in a moment the bad news is the entire square is under reconstruction it is essentially a building site it's been going on for a couple of years I had my fingers crossed that it would be completed by now but that isn't the case so we are going to be able to take a look at the market square, but we're going to have to do it with wire fencing, diggers, construction workers, and with the place half dug up. I'm just coming into the market square from the other side now, and I wanted to say that it's believed that this is where Polish history began. Poznan got its city rights in 1253, and around about the same time, they were building this incredible market square right in the center. It is a square with three streets on each side leading from it and it is surrounded by these colorful very well decorated large buildings with drawings and paintings on some of them plenty of little local hotels and cafes and restaurants in the center there are some really large but very important buildings so as we walk around a little further I'll tell you about those Behind me there you can see now the merchant houses which were originally built from wood in the 13th century and they were used by the merchants of the city to sell everyday items like candles and torches, cloth, salt, spices, all kinds of things that people would come here to buy. There was even a weigh house where those goods could be weighed. The wooden buildings were replaced by what is currently there now in the 15th century but the houses are still used by local businesses and shops right up until this day. Behind those buildings is the Poznan History Museum and then just next to the merchant houses, sorry about the noise by the way, is the incredible town hall. Again this has been around since the beginning of the city. It has elaborate drawings on the exterior walls and a large clock tower which every day at noon has a show featuring two billy goats. It is just approaching 12 noon and the billy goats are about to put on a show. They've been doing this for the last 500 years. Apparently it comes from a story that involves a chef cooking a meal, a feast for the mayor. The mayor wanted goat's meat. The chef went to get the goat but they escaped up to the top of the tower and started headbutting each other right at the top of the tower. What a show! Even the stonecutters went silent for a couple of moments so we could hear the clash between the billy goats at the top of the town hall. A crazy moment and a moment I would have known nothing about had I not have watched my fellow YouTubers here in Poland a year ago, Witty Travels, who pretty much went to every Christmas market in the country, including the one here at Poznan. Will and Katie, if you're watching, Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for the tip. I am now going to leave the old town, see what I can find outside of the city centre. We are heading now for the Roman Catholic Church of St. Stanislaus. It's not that way. It is also known as the Poznan Phara. And it is a, oh, well, there we go. It is a big pink building, I was about to say. It's pretty much unmissable. So that's what I'm looking for. Let's go take a closer look. The 
the church was built in the 18th century and inside you can really tell that its designers were of both Polish and Italian origin. I mean, the first thing that grabbed my attention when I came inside was the really large Corinthian columns and also the mosaics on the ceiling of the church. It is a spectacular place, no doubt about it. I'm just at the altar now, so I turn the camera around. You can see the decorations and magnificence of the altar itself. There we go. And if I turn around, behind me is a rather large organ above the door that I used to enter the church. What an incredible place. Let's see what else we can find. We've gone from the touristy market in the center of Poznan now to a very local market, a different market. Fruit, vegetables, secondhand clothing, flowers over there. Nice square actually, and this massive, elegant church overlooking it. seem to have wandered now into this really pretty park area with the falling leaves and pink buildings behind me. I am just a couple of moments from the old town. I'm getting hungry so I have heard this city is famous for the Saint Martin croissant. A croissant that since 2008 has been a protected food under the European Union and a certificate is required to bake and sell them here in Poznan. So I think what I'm going to do is head back into the old town itself, see if I can find a bakery and give one a try. Well, I have succumbed to the cold. The bubble hat is now on. It will probably stay on for the rest of the day. I did not find any croissants down in the market square. The bakeries that I saw were closed, but I did stop by the Wilpolska Museum. It's located in the old guardhouse and it documents the fight for freedom at the end of the First World War when this area was part of Germany and Polish freedom fighters wanted to regain their sovereignty. You can probably still hear the sound of the drilling in the market square. I'm not far away. I'm actually at the former royal castle now that dates back to the 1200s. This is the place where the Polish royal family would have held celebrations and key events in the timeline of Polish history. Unfortunately, it was pretty much destroyed at the end of the Second World War bar a few sections of wall, but it was rebuilt in the 1950s and 60s. It is now the Museum of Applied Arts. I have not given up on that croissant yet. It is getting dark, but I am determined to find one. So this is Adam Mikowitz Park. Adam Mikowitz was a famous poet, some say Poland's national poet. And over there is a monument dedicated to the protests in June 1956 against the communist government here in Poland. And beyond that is the Imperial Palace or the Imperial Castle, I should say, even though it is actually a palace. It was built in 1910. And one interesting thing to note is that when the Nazis occupied this area, Adolf Hitler turned it into one of his residences. And this is the poet's own square and statue, of course. Some candles left on the plinth. There is the 1956 memorial and the castle once again a wide open square is what we've got behind me here with these incredible buildings all around it actually okay it's getting even darker so i think i'm going to try and make it back to the market square and pick up one of those croissants there is the big wheel 
Christmas market behind it. We'll be back here soon. Some familiar sights. I found the entrance to the Croissant Museum. There we go. So we've got the museum, but no St. Martin's Croissants, apart from this shop next door, but that is a restaurant, I think. I don't really want to go in there and sit down and eat, so the search continues for a bakery. Hello, do you do St. Martin croissant? Ah, okay. Oh, could I have one, please? Thank you. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This little baby has cost me about 12 zloty. That is about two pounds sterling, just over two euros. Let's have a look at it. Oh yeah, look at that, boy. Boy, does that look good. It is a croissant with almond pastes, almonds and white poppies. It is apparently very sweet. I'm gonna take my gloves off and we will give it a go. It is a big old thing, so I might not eat all of it now. Mmm, that is, that's really good. It is definitely a dessert. It is very sweet and uh, I should imagine very filling as well. Right, I'm gonna eat the rest of this piece and then we're gonna hit the Christmas markets. goodness it is bitter cold out here tonight I mean that Poland knows how to put on a party a Christmas party the Christmas markets here are amazing so before I go and grab a few mulled wines and relax a little bit I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and even though there's one video left this year I will also bid you a Happy New Year I look forward to seeing you in 2024 keep traveling good night from Poznan